writers. I'm going to read Love Will See You Through Martin Luther King Jr.'s Six Guiding Beliefs. And as I read, I'm going to stop at certain points so that we can discuss text features and structure. Make sure to follow along as I read the focal text. Martin Luther King Jr. is recognized as one of the greatest men in history. I'm proud to say that he was also my uncle. Uncle Martin worked hard to end segregation and discrimination against African Americans. As he did so, Uncle Martin helped make America better. He believed that love and nonviolence were the solution. They were the basis of his six guiding beliefs. Number one, have courage. Uncle Martin faced adversity with courage. For him, courage meant solving problems without using violence. In 1955, Uncle Martin led a boycott to address the problem of segregation that forced African Americans to ride in the back of or stand up on public buses in Montgomery, Alabama. He encouraged people to stop riding the buses until segregation on buses ended. One night, as Uncle Martin spoke at a local church in Montgomery, he got the news that his house had been bombed by people who were angry about the boycott. He knew that his wife and two-month-old baby girl were inside the house. Uncle Martin rushed home. There, he found a mass of policemen, news reporters, and fire trucks surrounding his house. There were also many African Americans who wanted him to fight back. Uncle Martin courageously resisted the use of violence that night. First, Uncle Martin made sure that his family was safe. Then he walked onto his front porch and told the people to put down their weapons. He explained that the bus boycott would be won only with a spirit of love. Uncle Martin was right. In December of the following year, he proudly announced that the segregation on Montgomery's buses was over. So on page nine, there are a couple of transition words that help us easily identify a relationship between ideas. So the first order events can tell us what's happening when we see it. What does King do when he gets home? Well, we see that it says first right here, and that kind of gives us an idea of what he does. He made sure his family was safe. We see another transition word then where it talks about how he walked onto his front porch and told the people to put down their weapons. So those transition words are letting us know what's going to happen and how the relationship between the two sentences is connected. What point, if we think about this, what point does King want to do by making this action? Like, why is he going back out on his porch after everything and saying these things to these people? If we think about it, he really wants people to maintain that spirit of love. And it even mentions it in the bottom section down here. We're going to keep reading and we're going to stop on page 13 and talk a little bit more. Number two, love your enemies. Uncle Martin believed that as we courageously face our problems, we must seek to love our enemies. One Sunday morning, Uncle Martin preached a sermon called Loving Your Enemies. In his sermon, Uncle Martin explained how to love our enemies and why we must love our enemies. Right there, you have two italicized words. It says how and why. Italicized just kind of means they look a little slanted. Um, Why do you think that King thought it was important to tell people how to love their enemies and the reasons why they should? These italicized words make us as a reader want to pay attention to them more. So they want us to know why and how. And why do you think that that's important for him? People really don't say to love their enemies. So they probably wouldn't know how or why they should when someone is telling them that. I think that this is important for him to say that because that's not an easy thing to do. Let's keep reading.
He said that we that first we must make sure that we have love in our hearts. Then we should realize that there is a good that there is good and bad in everyone. Uncle Martin said that we should find the good in our enemies and love that part of them. So this is the how and the why. Uncle Martin said that the reason why we must love our enemies is because God wants us to. He also said that the more people hate, the more we will all live in a world filled with hate. Hate eventually destroys the spirit and the mind of the person who holds it. But love makes everyone stronger. Number three. Fight the pro problem, not the person who caused it. Uncle Martin fought his problems without fighting people. He believed that if you love your enemies, you can focus all your energy on solving the problem. Just before Easter Sunday in 1963, Uncle Martin went to Birmingham, Alabama to stop segregation against African Americans in stores and restaurants there. He was arrested and put in jail for protesting. As he read the local newspaper, he discovered a letter by some of his fellow preachers and pastors. Or pastors, In it, they said that his protests in Birmingham were ultimately untimely and that he should back away. Uncle Martin wrote a letter in response that did not attack the preachers and pastors, but rather focused on the problem of segregation. In the letter, he expressed his love and respect for the ministers. He knew that his letter was an opportunity to explain to hundreds of people why the battle for equality must be fought. Uncle Martin's letter received a lot of public attention and became famously known as the letter from Birmingham jail. Number four, when innocent people are hurt, others are inspired to help. Uncle Martin believed that when undeserving people are hurt, it inspires others to offer their help. He demonstrated this when he went to Selma, Alabama in 1965 to organize a voter registration drive and to stop discrimination that prevented African Americans from registering to vote. After Uncle Martin successfully registered to vote at a local Selma hotel, a white man attacked him because he didn't want African Americans to vote. Many of the people who fought for the voting rights of African Americans were also beaten as they marched and protested. When the world saw this cruelty and hatred, they witnessed the real evil behind discrimination. Across the country, people stepped forward to offer their help. President Lyndon B. Johnson was one of those people. Uncle Martin spoke with the president by phone. Later that year, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act, which outlawed discrimination and voter registration throughout the United States. So let's kind of think back on the couple of pages we just read. What happened to King after he voted? Well, someone attacked him. And how did President Johnson respond after this? He offered King his help and eventually signed the Voting Rights Act. How does this action relate to King's fourth guiding principle on page 18? Well, after seeing King get hurt for voting, the president wanted to help him. And not only did King get hurt, but others did as well. Let's go ahead and finish the story. And then we're going to discuss the main idea and some of those important supporting details. Number five, resist violence of any kind. Uncle Martin believed that we all are connected to one another. If someone hurts another person, they are also hurting themselves. He also understood that violence is a destructive force, but that love has the power to create and build. So even when Uncle Martin was hurt, he did not respond with violence. In 1966, He went to Chicago to protect practices that kept African Americans from having the same kind of housing as white people. As he and others marched someone who hated his protest through a rock that hit him in the head. Uncle Martin fell down on one knee for several moments. He didn't yell out, throw the rock back, or encourage his supporters to fight back. He knew that responding with violence would destroy his chances of creating better housing for African Americans. Uncle Martin got back up 
and continued the march. With the spirit of love, he stayed focused and kept working. Later that year, the Real Estate Board, Housing Authority, and Banking Institutions of Chicago all agreed to stop housing discrimination toward African Americans. Number six, the universe honors love. Um, On this picture of this rock, it says, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Uncle Martin believed that a higher force in the universe honors us when we use love. He put a lot of love out into the universe, and the universe honored him by giving him the power to achieve great things. Although he lived his life in constant danger, he refused violence because he knew love would prevail. Though Uncle Martin was killed by an act of violence, people have honored his legacy of love. The name Martin Luther King Jr. is recognized all over the world. A national holiday is named for him and celebrated every year. Countless city streets are named after him all over the world. Buildings and memorials stand in tribute to him. But more important than any of that, America is a better place because of Uncle Martin. Uncle Martin was a man of peace. Love was his way of life. Uncle Martin's six guiding beliefs teach us that love has power. His life was proof of that. Love will see you through. And so that's the end. Now that we've read through all of it, the main idea and the most important thing about Martin Luther King Jr.'s Six Guiding Beliefs is love will see you through, which is why it's also the title and why um, it's clearly seen throughout all of his principles. So love will see you through. Some of these other big supporting details for this are the clearly the, the guiding beliefs that he has. So it is true, his first guiding belief is have courage. His second guiding belief is love your enemies. Another of his powerful beliefs is fight the problem, not the person who caused it. And it's certainly true that when innocent people are hurt, others are inspired to help. And although Martin Luther King lived all his beliefs, he suffered the most from his fifth belief, resist a violence of any kind. And he preached and proved his sixth belief, belief, the universe honors love. Thus saying that the whole idea for this writing was love will see you through. Mm-hmm.